Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Chrysler could be bailing out Fiat before too long. Car dealers say Audi is the best brand to have and sales at Harley-Davidson fall through the floor. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, April 21st, 2010, and now the news. Fiat and Chrysler reported their first quarter earnings, and the numbers tell an interesting story when you compare the two. First off, both companies took in about the same amount of revenue. Fiat Autos took in $9 billion, Chrysler took in $9.7 billion. Fiat posted a trading profit of $203 million, Chrysler posted an operating profit of $143 million. Fiat sold 532,000 cars and light commercial vehicles. Chrysler sold 334,000. Here's my AutoLine Insight. Fiat sold a lot more vehicles than Chrysler, but Chrysler earned more revenue than Fiat. And while Fiat made more operating profit than Chrysler, it wasn't by much. In fact, by the end of the year, Chrysler will likely be far ahead of Fiat in revenue and profit. One very telling fact. If you divide total sales into total revenue, Chrysler gets about $29,000 for every vehicle that it sells, while Fiat gets less than $17,000. Well, no wonder Marchione wanted to get his hands on Chrysler. Yeah, Fiat saved Chrysler, but within a year or so, it is going to be the other way around. In a sign that people are still holding off on big purchases because of the economy, Harley-Davidson's first quarter earnings dropped like a rock. According to the Wall Street Journal, the company earned $33 million in the first quarter, compared to $117 million a year ago. That's down 72%. Sales fell 28%, and the company expects sales to be down the whole year. In order to boost earnings, the company is looking to expand in international markets and is selling off the sport bike brands that it bought earlier this decade. M Live reports that for the first time in over a century, General Motors is not in the top 10 of the Fortune 500 list. The company fell from number 6 to 15, the first time in 101 years it was not in the top 10. On the other hand, Ford did remain in the top 10, but fell from number 7 to number 8. According to the Detroit News, General Motors will invest $120 million in its Detroit Hamtramck plant to build the upcoming 2012 Chevy Malibu. The site is already home to the Chevy Volt, but assembly of this extended range electric is not going to take up much space at the plant, which is gigantic. That plant is 3.6 million square feet. GM needs a high volume car to help boost its capacity utilization. Building the Malibu at both its Fairfax, Kansas and Detroit Hamtramck plants will give the company more flexibility. Audi is the luxury brand with the best prospects for the future, so says the National Automobile Dealers Association, which just published a semi-annual study on the issue. The NADA's findings indicate that U.S. car dealers observed the greatest increase of value in the Audi franchise compared to all the other premium brands. This should come as no surprise. The company has been shooting up the charts, surpassing Mercedes-Benz in global sales, and nipping at BMW's heels. It's on track to become the world's best-selling luxury car maker. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Miradart wrote in to say, even on the small car platforms out there, why are there almost no wagons from the USA? No Cobalt wagon, no Stratus Avenger wagon. I don't think the Focus wagon is even still made. I don't get it. Well, Miradart, even though enthusiasts love station wagons, the general public just doesn't buy them. The sales numbers are abysmal. People will tell you how cool and practical they look, but then they'll turn around and buy something else. 
crossovers are actually station wagons designed to look a little bit more like SUVs, and that is where the station wagon market has gone. Crossovers are the hottest segment right now. Baja Basta has a question about how car companies count their sales. I have been curious about when vehicle sales are calculated. Are they considered from plant to dealer or dealer to customer? Good question, Baja Basta. The industry uses two ways to count sales. First is factory sales, which is just what it sounds like. Sales that go from the factory to dealers and distributors. But those numbers are usually just quoted in the annual reports. Then there's customer sales, from dealer to customer. Whenever you hear about sales, that's the latter number that they're using. Sales to customers, both fleet and retail. And Afghanak wants to know, I've heard Toyota's problem over and over again through the news. Is it a problem which only the US versions have? I live in Europe. Here, we don't hear anything about those electric problems. Well, Afghanak, there are two reasons why you don't hear about this problem of unintended acceleration outside of the United States. First, in America, everyone needs to be able to drive a car. We don't have a whole lot of public transportation, and going by car is the way most people get to work, so we have to let just about anyone drive, even if they're not a very good driver. I've said all along, there aren't any electronic ghosts that are mysteriously making Toyotas accelerate out of control. It's driver error. The second reason you don't hear about this outside of the USA is that no other country in the world has the army of plaintiff attorneys that we do. And no other country allows lawyers to earn contingency fees where they get paid based on the part of the money that they get from the settlement, which incentivizes those lawyers to sue for massive amounts of money. Hey, don't forget, tomorrow night on Autoline After Hours, we have Doug Fian the GM Racing Program Manager for the American Le Mans Series. But remember, when the official show ends, the broadcast goes on. Michelle Naranjo of MissMotorMouth.com will take over our airwaves and make you the star. Anyone can call in to continue the automotive discussion or to talk about new issues we weren't able to get to in the show. Anything goes when we open the phone line, so be sure to stick around for that. And that is it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.